Let's talk about seven things that the iPad can do that an iPhone cannot. I've got my iPad mini and I also have the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. This is the M1. So this is the latest version of the iPad Pro. And I use my iPads a lot to do things that I just can't do or can't do well on an iPhone. And so we're gonna talk about those seven things. Because a lot of people ask me still today, even though the iPads have been out so long, what can an iPad do that an iPhone cannot? And is it worth purchasing one? And I have two different iPads. I've got the mini and I have the pro. And so uh, before we jump into those seven things, I'm gonna just briefly explain why I have two iPads and why I use these iPads in my everyday life. So I use the mini because it's portable, super small. I can carry it with me anywhere that I go. I have the cellular edition, so it always has connectivity and I'm able to get work done and stuff in those moments moments where uh, I find myself having a few extra minutes. Uh, something like this is much easier to take into a meeting or when I'm uh, you know, spending time with someone or whatever and, and I want to have a device there for taking notes or you know, doing really anything. The smaller device is nice because it's just not so big as the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. Now I'm also a student pilot and I use the app ForeFlight on the iPad mini. It, the smaller size is perfect for being in a smaller airplane and utilizing ForeFlight for navigation and all the great things that that app does. If you want to know more about the iPad mini and how it works with ForeFlight for aviation, I've got a video on that. Check the link in the description below. But the iPad Pro 12.9 inch is a much better option for doing things like photo editing, uh, some light video editing. I wanted to say video editing, but I really don't do a lot of video editing on the iPad uh, Pro. But when I'm writing, when I'm doing light web development, this device is absolutely fantastic. And I love the iPad Pro for that. And so in this video, we're gonna talk about things that uh, maybe more of them will be better on the iPad Pro because of the larger display, but some of these things, well, I'd say the majority of these things also can be done on a smaller display like the iPad mini. So let's jump into the first thing. The first thing is that this can be a notebook. A notebook is great having it in a digital platform. And as Apple has continued to work on iPad OS, the Apple Pencil and the integration there has just continued to be more useful. So since the iPhone does not have Apple Pencil support and really it doesn't support any good stylus uh, use, the iPad mini becomes the next size device that you can use with a stylus. And then the iPad Pro, of course, being a great experience there as well. So when I want to be writing digital notes, I utilize my iPad. I make fine photo edits utilizing the Apple Pencil on my iPad Pro usually because it's a bigger display. I can get in on those finer details and I do most of my photo editing on the iPad Pro. But the iPad is great as a notebook because for me, a notebook is only good if you have it with you. And even if I don't have my iPad with me, the apps that I've taken notes in sync over to my iPhone so I could view all of those notes on my iPhone. And, uh, you know, I've tried using traditional paper notebooks and I just never have it with me when I need it. And then when I need the information, it's in a notebook somewhere. And that's unfortunate. So being able to utilize the iPad mini or the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil to take notes is fantastic. And then the added benefit of using the Apple Pencil for things like finer editing of photos and finally attempting to learn how to draw, stuff like that is absolutely fantastic on the iPad. Now, another really cool feature of the iPad is the ability to convert your handwriting to text. Now, for me, I like handwriting, but my handwriting is horrible. So I like utilizing the tool that allows your handwriting to be converted to text so that later on I can actually read what it is that I wrote. As I mentioned, handwriting conversion is great because sometimes we want the feeling of being able to write, but we want the ability to have that converted to text. And that used to be a discrepancy with the Apple Pencil. You can write but it would not convert to text. And there were apps that would try to convert for you, but it wasn't that great. Now it's baked in to iPad OS and it works great. So the third thing that an iPad can do that an iPhone could not is have apps in split screen mode. That means that you can have more than one app up at a time. Now, most of the time I have a single app up because I like the ability of just 
focusing on one thing at a time. Usually I'm writing, responding to emails, doing some social media work or something like that on my iPad. And I like that focus of just having one app opened full screen and having a great experience for that app on my iPad. But when I want to do things like research, like maybe I am watching a video and taking some notes, I could split screen those. If I'm browsing the web and taking some notes or I'm in Notion doing some of my productivity work, I can have split screen and have two apps up at the same time. Now it works on the iPad mini, but it's even better experience on the iPad Pro with the bigger display. And the new features that have come with iPad OS 15 make it even easier for managing split screen apps. So that's easily one of my favorite features on the iPad that's not available on the iPhone. Now, another great feature of the iPad, which is number four, is the ability to use Sidecar, which makes your iPad a secondary display for a device like your Mac. So if you have a laptop, which I do a lot of work from a laptop, I've had, I currently have the 16 inch MacBook Pro M1 Max, but for the last year, I've been using the 13 inch MacBook Pro M1, and that display was a little small. And so I would often use my iPad Pro as a secondary display utilizing Sidecar, which is a great experience. It is amazing and almost magical how well that operates. When moving something from one display to another that are not connected by a cable, they're just connected over a Wi-Fi connection, they work really well. So Sidecar is a fantastic feature, something that's not available on an iPhone, and it wouldn't even really matter if it was because the iPhone display is so small. Having your iPad, especially if you have a 12.9 inch iPad next to something like a 13 inch uh, display on a MacBook Pro makes for a great experience. So the fifth thing that your iPad could do that an iPhone cannot do is replace your laptop. With the Magic Keyboard case here from Apple, uh, I can easily snap my iPad into the case, have a full-size keyboard or like a good-size keyboard that feels good to use on the 12.9 inch, and have a trackpad that is just as functional as the trackpad I'm used to on a MacBook Pro. So when doing things like editing photos, which I commonly do from an iPad, being able to pinch and zoom, utilizing the trackpad and utilizing keyboard shortcuts and stuff like that is great. I still find it faster to get around the iPad utilizing a keyboard and a trackpad than utilizing the touch display, especially on more complex apps where fine movements and stuff like that are necessary. If I want to be in a relaxed state, maybe I'm sitting on the couch, I won't use uh, the keyboard case. I'll use the iPad itself just you know, resting up against my legs and I'll use the Apple Pencil for photo editing or editing a podcast or writing or doing anything like that. But when it comes to doing some social media work, things where I'm writing a lot, I definitely love using the keyboard case. I sometimes use my iPad with a, a standard keyboard and mouse anyways, just because it's a great experience. I have the iPad with optimized apps I, going full screen, making it much easier for me to focus, utilizing a great keyboard and a mouse as an external peripheral, connecting over Bluetooth to the iPad makes it a great alternative to a laptop. Now, it can't fully replace a laptop for things that I do, like video editing still is not that great on an iPad if you're trying to be fast and productive at it, but the iPad does pretty darn near everything else just as well as it would if you were on a laptop. And so the iPad Pro, I think more so the iPad Pro, can replace a laptop an iPhone cannot. Now, if you're into gaming and you don't want it to feel totally like mobile gaming, the iPad is the closest thing you can get to a more immersive experience in gaming than an iPhone. An iPhone is great for mobile, pull it out of your pocket, knock out a quick session in a game or something like that, but it just isn't that great of an experience uh, if I really want to be in the game and feel like I'm uh, enjoying something and not you know, worrying about what I should be doing with my phone, like checking email or something like that. So if I want Want a more immersive experience in gaming, I pull out my 12.9 inch iPad Pro, I'll connect a controller to it, I'll put on some headphones, and I feel much more connected to the experience of the game. Now, on top of that, we also have the Liquid Retina XDR display on the 12.9 model, which just really makes those colors pop, and it feels really great. Of course, the display is great on other iPads and also on the iPhone itself, but a more immersive experience 
experience is gonna be had on an iPad, not just because of the bigger display, but because of the better quality display. Now, the last thing that an iPad can do than an iPhone could not is allow for external devices to be connected to it via USB Type-C. So breakout devices like a hub that's gonna make it easier for you to not only charge your iPad, but also connect additional things like a storage device, SD card, stuff like that is gonna require a hub. Now, I did a video on iPad Pro accessories and I talked a lot about hubs and stuff like that in that video, so I'll link to that below if you're interested in iPad Pro accessories or even iPad mini accessories, but an iPhone does not have the ability to have that type of accessory connected. And so it's unfortunate because if I wanna be charging my device, but I also want an external drive connected so that I have additional storage, and maybe I even wanna take the SD card out of my camera and connect it to my iPad or connect it to my device, it has to be an iPad. I cannot get something like that to work on an iPhone. I can really only do one of those things at a time on an iPhone. If I have an SD card to Lightning, I can connect that to my iPhone, fine. If I wanna charge my iPhone over a cable, I can do that. Of course, I could charge my iPhone wirelessly while, uh, you know, which, but then that gets a little crazy having wireless charging along with having another device connected to the bottom of your uh, iPhone. It's just not that great of an experience. The iPad provides a much better experience there. Now, do I wish that the USB-C port was maybe a little more properly placed for connecting and it didn't just have to hang out the side? Of course, but the ability to be able to connect multiple devices is great. When I'm recording podcast, if it's just me, I will connect a USB microphone directly to the iPad along with a charging cable. And then I also can have an external drive if I need to connect it all at the same time to my iPad while I'm recording a podcast. There's external drive support, external storage support built right in to iPad OS, which makes it great for not clogging up the storage on your iPad, but being able to get some of those files off and put them on an external storage device. Those are things that you just can't do on an iPhone. So while iPhones are absolutely fantastic, there are things that you can't do on them and you can do those on the iPad. We've talked about seven of those things right now. When you really get down to the nitty gritty, there are other things that an iPad can do that an iPhone cannot. but we're really starting to step into app specific things where apps like Adobe Lightroom are easier to use on an iPad than it is on an iPhone. Even though you can still do all the same adjustments on an iPhone that you can do on an iPad and vice versa, better experience on the bigger display. So that's something to be said too. Larger display, better experience for some of these apps and just the things that we might find ourselves doing on an iPad. So if you've been trying to justify an iPad, maybe some of these things helped you figure that out. An iPad is super useful. I didn't think that it would be when they first came out, but I found many ways for iPads to be useful in my everyday life. I don't have to carry my big laptop around with me all the time. The iPad is just more accessible and an easier on-the-go device that gets about 90% of what I do on a daily basis accomplished. So there's links down in the description below to iPads. You can click on those links and uh, it will take you over to either Amazon or B&H Photo where you can purchase those devices. They're affiliate links, so by you clicking on them, it helps support my channel here. Doesn't cost you any additional money. Amazon has good prices and B&H Photo Video has fantastic prices as well uh, on the iPad and they always tend to have them in stock. And then a list to some of the accessories that I use commonly below that. After this video, make sure to check out my iPad Pro accessories or iPad mini accessories video. Those will help you understand some of the things that I think are just must needs for an iPad to have an overall fantastic experience. But that's gonna do it for this video today. Thanks so much for watching. Give it a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.